Now in this session we're going to use this simple bridge model to consider lift off supports and the new slab designer. Now I'm going to set active just the deck because that's all we're going to consider. You can see we've got thicknesses and tapered edges. If I switch off the fleshing I can look at the supports. So we have bearings at both abutments. Now these bearings are rigid supports at the moment. Now if I look down on plan on the structure we have a 30 degree skew and we have two low cases dead load and a design truck. If I set the design truck active it's parked down in this obtuse corner. Now we're going to analyse this but before I do that I'm going to go to analysis one and I'm going to choose not to solve the second load case and I get a red cross next to the design truck. So when I analyse this, I'll just get results for dead load. So now what we're looking at are the reactions for the dead load case. And you can see we get a high vertical reaction in the obtuse corner, but then a negative number next to that. Now this is because we're using rigid supports. Now to mitigate this, I'm actually going to put a spring stiffness in to represent an elastomeric bearing. I'm going to do this on each of the vertical support conditions for the three bearings I have set up in the model. Once I've done that, I can reanalyze, but I'm going to switch back on the design truck low case. So I get both results. If I now analyze this, you can see that I get a better distribution of the dead load reactions. But if I look at the design truck, you'll see I get a high vertical reaction in the obtuse corner, but in the opposite obtuse corner, I get a negative, an uplift. So even though I'm using spring supports to mitigate the elastomeric bearings, I still might need to consider lift off supports. Now to do this, I'm gonna create a second analysis. Now, if I use the analysis menu to generate a new structural analysis, if I switch on all, I will create an analysis that copies the geometry, the material and the supports, but it doesn't copy the load cases. If I want an exact copy of analysis one, I hold the control key down and drag analysis one down in the tree view. And that gives me an exact copy, including the load cases. Now I'm going to rename analysis one copy to analysis two lift off. And in this second analysis, I'm going to put on some lift off supports. To do that, I'm going to go to the attributes tree view, double click on my first bearing here, and I'm going to set up the lift off supports. Now I'm going to add the name lift off to the attribute name. I'm going to click on the lift off button and I'm going to select lift off here. This identifies the lift off direction. Here I can set a force that would have to be overcome before lift off occurs. So if I had 10, that would be 10 kips before lift off occurred. Now down here, I can set what happens when lift off occurs to the longitudinal and transverse fixed to. So if I want them all to be free when it lifts off, I would set this option. However, I'm going to actually leave it so that the longitudinal and transverse restraints are still fixed. Once I've set up one of them, I now need to do the other two bearing supports that I've got in this model. So again, add the name, click the lift off option, identify the lift off direction and repeat that for the third bearing in this model. Okay, once I've created the three liftoff attributes, I need to assign them to the liftoff analysis. Now I'm just going to switch the points back on and I'm going to select this fixed bearing and I'm going to drag on the fixed bearing with liftoff behavior into the liftoff analysis. I'm going to grab the roller bearing here, drag on the new liftoff support and finally just the vertical bearings at the other locations within the model. And again, making sure that when I assign them, I assign them into the liftoff analysis. So we have now two analyses, one with rigid supports, one with liftoff supports. Now, I only need to run the second analysis because the first analysis is still valid. Okay, this is now run and I can look at the dead load reactions or the design truck reactions. Now, for the design truck case, you can see that we have high reactions where the truck is, but the other reactions are missing from this model because they've effectively lifted off. 
Now this is a bit of an artificial case because obviously for true liftoff to occur it would have to overcome the dead load reactions first. Now rather than just looking at vertical reactions on this model, what I can do is go to my layers tab and I can switch off the reactions and I'm going to switch on the contours and I'm going to look at contours of bending moment MX. So now we're looking at the contour of MX for a single load case but I want to create a combination so analysis basic combination we have both sets of results available to us I'm going to choose the ones from the liftoff analysis and if I go to grid I can put a factor of 1.05 on the dead load and 1.35 on the design truck. I'm going to call this combination ULS and I can then set this combination active and what I'm seeing now is a bending moment for the combination in terms of kit feet per feet width. Now rather than just looking at the bending moment if I go to the bridge menu I can look at the slab design so we're going to look at the Ashto slab design for ULS combination and I'm going to work with the default values here. I can then set up the reinforcements that I need to work with. So I've got number eight bars longitudinally, number six bars transversely. I've got two inch cover top and bottom and I've got a 60 degree skew angle. So what we're looking at now is a utilization factor. But if I click on steel area, I'm looking at a contour plot of inches squared of reinforcement per foot width. If I go to bar size, click there, I can look at a bar size plot. If I go back to the utilization, we're looking at a utilization of the reinforcement. And you can see that here we're above one. So my default bars aren't working. So if I go back, I'm going to change the number 8 longitudinal bars to number 10s, transverse bars to number 8s. And I can then look at my utilisation factors. Now here you can see the utilisation factor now is 0.7, so I know that the structure is working with my default set of reinforcement that I've started to look at.